This report is going to make you absolutely furious, as it should. Well, hello, my silky friends. Yeah, I am heated up about this one. If I look a little bit sick at my stomach, my dog is over here puking right in the middle of recording. And strangely enough, today's story is enough to make you vomit as well. Maybe that she's just picking up on it. I don't know. But we're going to talk about a Filipino televangelist who not only was busted for being a chomo, but far, far worse. Take a look at this. Filipino televangelist Apollo Quib... Quib I'm sorry, I'm really not trying to mess up that name. I, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, arrested after weeks-long police raid. Now, this was this came out on September 11th. This is also by the Roy's Report. So take a look at this guy. Nice. Filipino televangelist Apollo, I'm just going to say Q, who is wanted by both the FBI and law enforcement in the Philippines for labor and child moving from one place to another, was arrested on Sunday, authorities announced. The arrest concludes a weeks-long standoff between members of his church, the Kingdom of Jesus Christ Church, or the KOJC, and police in a religious compound in the southern Philippines. They were actually so happy about it, the interior minister of the Philippines proclaimed on his Facebook page, Preacher has been caught, in all caps. Yeah, so there's obviously a standoff, but let's get into the nitty-gritty details. Okay, he is a self proclaimed son of god well you know first of all we all are sons and daughters of god if we're born again so that doesn't make you special buddy all right and he was the spiritual advisor to former philippines president rodrigo duarte his church which is also has a u.s headquarters in los angeles claims to have more than six million members six million across 200 countries oh wow Good thing you weren't a small operation. The 74-year-old pastor, now I, I will say this, he doesn't look 74. The 74-year-old pastor is on the FBI's most wanted list for multiple charges, including child trafficking, by force, bulk cash smuggling, fraud, and coercion. Now, if that doesn't say the love of Jesus, I don't know what does. In the Philippines, the pastor faces charges of abuse under the country's Department of Justice. So it wasn't just him, it was four of his companions who were arrested Sunday uh, after police issued them a 24-hour ultimatum to come out of their 75-acre religious compound. They surrendered four hours later. Again, this begs to ask, should pastors be able to grow ministries this big? I mean, you know, normally people just like to say, oh, I'm blessed. That's great and all. First of all, there is no pastor that needs that amount of money. All right. Are you giving it away? Are you supporting a whole lot of ministries? I mean, fully? Because in my opinion, and according to the Bible, you should live in, you know, modesty. Okay. You take what you need. You don't need a 75-acre compound unless you are having, you know, tons of ministry houses for people. And then, you know, your salary wouldn't be that big if you were really helping people, would it? But let's go back to the story. Okay, so they had been trying to arrest him for more than two weeks, and they reportedly hid in an underground bunker. Again, cha-ching, that ain't cheap. His followers allegedly threw stones at officers and blocked nearby highways. Multiple officers were injured in the raid and one follower died. Police allege the follower died of natural causes while former President Duarte claims the police caused it. Well, you shouldn't have been out there throwing rocks at the police. Now, the pastor's attorney stated on Facebook that the pastor surrendered, quote, because he couldn't stand the suffering of his followers much longer on church grounds. That's why he surrendered. Of course it is. It's not because, you know, you can't live underground forever. But of course, that is just my opinion. 
And by the way, he also said that his cathedral was desecrated because of the disruption of the police. So it's desecrated by the police wanting to enforce the law, but not desecrated by your sick, unnatural desires and goings on. That's not what desecrated it. Oh, okay. I get it. He also has long maintained his innocence, claiming that the U.S. government has bribed people to fabricate lies about him. Now, I mean, to be honest, I'm not saying that that has never happened in a situation ever, but come on, let's be real. It's probably true. Police Chief General Romel Francisco Marbil said additional victims have come forward and testified about abuses they experienced from the pastor. He did not clarify how many people had come forward at this time. These courageous victims have spoken up, revealing their har harrowing experiences. The abuse they endured shows an alarming pattern of manipulation and exploitation. Now, I would be more inclined to agree that the government bribed people if we weren't seeing this literally everywhere around the world, with pastors doing heinous things against children. The girls, who are as young as 12, were part of a group that police called Inner Circle Pastorals. Pastorals acted as personal assistants to Apollo, preparing his meals, cleaning his residences, and giving him massages. Now, what kind of pastor has a 12-year-old girl giving you a massage? Come on. How stupid do you think we are? They were also required to have relations with him as part of their night duty. Who do you think you are? You're 74 years old, buddy. Now, the police are saying they are going to leave no stone unturned in the pursuit of justice. Well, good for them. I also hope that they get every last one of these sickos that were part of this ministry. And they all need to be behind bars under the jail somewhere. Now, they are also being charged with fraud because uh, it said that the members were reportedly forced to solicit donations for a bogus cha charity. <laughs> God, we hear this a lot, don't we? Instead, the money went to financing the church leaders' lavish lifestyles. Man, when I was covering the case of Micah Miller, that seemed to be going on there, too. Bogus. Bogus charities. Now, this is really disturbing. Girls and young women between the ages of 12 and 25, they were coerced to be in this trafficking and carnal relationship under threats of eternal damnation. Like what? You're telling your people here, these young girls, that if you do not have relations with me, you're going to hell? What? There are no words that would describe the anger that I feel at this moment. Now, the pastor had previously attempted to set conditions for his surrender, including a guarantee that he would not be extradited to the U.S. to face charges. <laughs> but uh, President Marcos Jr. told reporters that the pastor is not in a place to negotiate his terms. Well, good for you. So at the moment, we're waiting to see if they will grant ext extradition to the U.S., which I hope and pray they do. So once again, you have people in power, my God, twisting the minds of innocent, trusting women, maybe, you know, maybe men in some situations. Again, all under the name of God. Let's manipulate people by telling them that we are the, you know, sons of God. And if you don't listen to us, buddy, you're going to hell. I'm going to tell you, hell's going to be really hot for some people, and I am not sorry about it in this case. Anybody who takes a position of authority and abuses other people with it, yeah, put them under the jail. All right, what do y'all think? I told you I was going to be harsh again, and I am. I can't, it, it, it infuriates me. What is going on? I mean, it almost seems like this is the new con. You know, just slap a label of pastor on yourself and then you can do what you want because nobody's going to look because everybody's going to trust you. 
right? You're an upstanding citizen. I think it's time that we demand, I mean, I'm talking about all church people. I think that we should demand a background check on everybody from your Sunday school teachers, definitely your pastors and elders and stuff like that. There would be nothing wrong with doing a yearly update. Let's see. You know, even the Bible says to know those that lab labor among us. And apparently we're not doing the background checks and what would be expected of anybody who works with the public. You know, I can't get a job in nursing without going through a background check. So why are these people allowed to run rampant when you are also influencing children and adults? And the bottom line, I think that we as a body are responsible because under the guise or name of grace, 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 grace. Yeah, grace. That's not my real singing voice, by the way. Um, but yeah, under the guise of grace, you know, we're just like, oh, we're, we're not going to demand that. Well, we should. Don't you think? Don't you think 2024 has exposed enough people that we need to be responsible and accountable to God to know who labors among us? All right, that's my rant. It's over. Um, I'm going to wait to see what's going to happen uh, with his extradition. Come and hit me in the comments. I know that you will. But whatever you do, stay safe and stay silky. Bye-bye.